On January 17, 1929, a star was born. Not of stage, screen, or radio, but of the newspaper funny pages. The star? Popeye the Sailor Man. Meant as a throwaway character, creator E.C. Seagar was taken completely by surprise, as readers loved Popeye. More Popeye, they demanded, and so he obliged them. Seagar had been working as a cartoonist at King Feature Syndicate in New York when they asked him to come up with a new comic strip to replace Minute Movies. He created Thimble Theater, which debuted on December 15, 1919. It featured the characters of Cole and Nana Oil, their son Castor and daughter Olive, as well as Olive's boyfriend, Ham Gravy. The strip was slow to catch on, but gradually picked up in popularity. When Popeye was finally introduced in 1929, Thimble Theater had already been running successfully for 10 years. Popeye was just a sailor hired by Castor Oil. When Castor saw Popeye on the docks, he said, Hey, are you a sailor? Popeye answered with his now famous first line, Do you think I'm a cowboy? Popeye left the strip when the tale concluded, but when the fans demanded more of the swaggering sailor, Seagar worked him back into the story. The world fell in love with the ugly, wisecracking sailor. Letters poured in from readers throughout the country for more Popeye, which Seagar couldn't believe. Within a matter of four years, the strip's name was changed to Thimble Theater, starring Popeye, and soon the other original characters, other than Olive Oil, were phased out. Popeye's new friends were brought in to spice up the strip, including J. Wellington Wimpy, Bluto, and Sweet Pea, among others. Popeye's fame was becoming worldwide in 1933. Animator Max Fleischer approached Seagar to do a series of animated cartoons based on Popeye and his friends. It ended up being a very lucrative deal for both parties, as the Fleischer studio produced a total of 108 episodes, with all but three being in black and white. The three color episodes were adaptations of the Arabian Nights, Sinbad the Sailor, and Ali Baba's Forty Thieves. The idea of Popeye eating spinach for his incredible strength came from the Fleischers, not the comics. But Seagar liked the idea so much, he incorporated it into the comic strip. In 1934, a study came out stating that since the launch of the Popeye cartoons, spinach sales had climbed by 33%. Now, they needed the right voice for the one-eyed sailor. Enter Billy Costello, a vaudeville singer who would sometimes use a gruff-sounding voice in his singing act. They signed Billy on as the voice of Popeye and started production. As the Popeye cartoons grew in popularity, so did Costello's ego. He wanted more money and more time off. He was doing live shows between movie features billed as the voice of Popeye. The Fleischers felt like they were stuck. One day, director Dave Fleischer was walking by the story department when he heard someone doing Popeye's voice. He asked who it was, and story man Jack Mercer raised his hand. <laughs> oh, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I'm strong to the finish, cause I eat me spinach. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> Come with me, said Dave. They walked to his brother Max's office, where Jack did his Popeye impression. Max just nodded his head and smiled. Costello was becoming more and more difficult to work with, and when the next recording session came up, Max Fleischer, who was fed up with Billy's attitude, pulled Costello aside and fired him on the spot. Jack Mercer now became the new voice of Popeye, a job he held until his death in 1984. Popeye made his cinematic debut in the short Popeye the Sailor, a Betty Boop cartoon released in 1933. Although Betty Boop makes a brief appearance, the animation mostly introduces the major characters. Popeye is on his way to rescue Olive Oil, who's been abducted by Bluto. The triangle between Popeye, Olive, and Bluto was established right from the start and quickly became the foundation for most Popeye cartoons. I Am What I Am was the first installment in the ongoing Popeye the Sailor series. The Popeye cartoons were a big hit with movie houses that were demanding more content as fast as it could be produced. By 1936, Popeye was the star character at Fleischer Studios. 
In the 1930s, Popeye sold more tickets and overtook Mickey Mouse as the most popular cartoon character in America. The original Popeye cartoons produced by the Fleischers had a very different feel than those made by Disney. They had a more urban feel and reflected the Depression-era hardships. Popeye lived in a rundown apartment in the city and would mutter under his breath in vocal parts that were usually ad-libbed by the voice actor. In the earlier cartoons, the voices were recorded after the animation had already been done. Lines were sometimes improvised while the actors watched the finished version of the cartoon. By the end of 1939, Max and Dave Fleischer had ceased talking to each other and were only interacting by memo. They were at war with Paramount for ownership of their animation studio in 1940, and in May 1941, Paramount took control of the studio, firing both Max and Dave and renaming the studio to Famous Studios. Production continued on Popeye, and with World War II looming, Paramount had Popeye join the Navy. His regular clothes became a white sailor uniform, which he wore until the 1970s. In the first short produced by Famous Studios, Popeye fought the Japanese in the 1942 short, You're a Sap, Mr. Jap. It is one of the most well-known World War II propaganda cartoons, and one that many have said is the most racist cartoon ever made, although quite a few Popeye shorts contain racial stereotypes. This cartoon was later banned due to its racially offensive caricatures of the Japanese and remains banned from broadcast television to this day. The Popeye cartoons played at movie houses throughout the world from 1933 to 1957. That same year, television became the new home for Popeye, entertaining millions of kids. In 1960, King Features Animation produced 200 new television cartoons based on Popeye. The name of Bluto was changed to Brutus because it was thought that Paramount Pictures owned the rights to the name Bluto. This was not the case, however. King Features, it turns out, owned the name because the character was first created for the comic strip. At the age of just 43, Popeye's creator, E.C. Seagar, died on October the 13th, 1938, of liver disease, but his creation continues to live on. In 1977, Seagar's hometown of Chester, Illinois, dedicated a park in his honor, along with a six-foot bronze statue of Popeye for all the world to see and love. What are your favorite memories of Popeye? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, this is Rich from Rerun Zone, signing off.